when I, closer I got over here, the more smoke I could see, and the thick, it was real thick, real thick smoke. It, 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 after 50 years, it should, it's, it's time to heal and, and, you know, and go on, but they should never be forgotten. Heartfelt words from one of the survivors of the Pyatt Street plane crash. 50 years ago today, an Air Force KC-135 tanker loaded with jet fuel crashed into the neighborhood near 20th and Pyatt, killing 30 people and injuring dozens more. Today, a memorial park is located at that site. Cake's Monica Castro is there live. Monica? The memorial that was here today was an emotional one for many as they reflected on the tragedy that took place here 50 years ago today. There was just so much fuel and scattered all over and the fires and such. It was, uh, it was really as I can think of what hell must be like. Stephen Carlton flew all the way from Minneapolis to take part of the 50th anniversary memorial ceremony. I could not not come. For this Wichita, Sharon Watkins, the site where this memorial sits was her home. She says she could have been a name listed on the memorial statue. I lived here and I just missed it, barely missed it. I mean, to me, that was a lot. And then to have the memorial on the property where I actually lived at, that brought a lot of emotion to. This Wichita, a local dentist, had the daunting task of identifying the bodies after the horrific crash. It was pretty personal because one of the uh, patients, one of my patients was I identified right then, I, a little girl, five years old. Wonderful little girl. 50 years ago, 30 people died of those 23 residents and seven airmen, a day many longtime Wichita residents say they'll never forget. Now, during the memorial ceremony, they had a moment of silence to remember those lives lost. Now, tonight, they will have a dinner for the relatives of those victims at the Wichita State Metroplex. Reporting live, Monica Castro, Cake News. All right, thank you very much, Monica. And, you know, one of the people that we just saw who lived through that crash hasn't spoken about it much since then until now. Cake Team coverage of the Pyatt crash anniversary continues now with Chris Frank. Chris. Well, Susan, when you think about it, there are victims beyond the 30 killed, including those left to live without a family member or friend, such as the story of Sharon Dale Watkins. There's a lot of things go through my mind about it. Sharon Dale Watkins was 15 at the time of the crash. Returning to Pyatt Memorial Park brings back memories of that fateful day 50 years ago. I wonder how I could have probably save them. This crash memorial was erected where her childhood home was and where that tanker crashed at 20th and Pyatt. Sharon's mother Alice and baby sister Cheryl Ann Dale were killed inside the house. Should I just stayed home with them? Sharon is left with only a few photos of her then two-year-old sister. All photos of her mom were destroyed in the fire. They were still in the bed when I left home. It was a Saturday morning. Sharon drove to her grandmother's house at 12th and Matthewson to eat breakfast. Oven, and that was the best bacon. I just, we just, everybody just loved it. She started back home, but remembered leaving the skillet on the stove, so returned to grandma's. That might have saved her because that was the crash moment. Her house shook, and I heard a loud boom. She didn't know what it was until she neared her neighborhood to see such heavy smoke and flames. Well, it took a while for me to find out that they were killed. Her father left work, found Sharon, and broke the news to her. He says, no, a plane crashed, and it hit our house. And he was just crying, and, you know, we just both start crying and hugging each other, and that's... Yeah. I couldn't say no more. It was just awful. Each anniversary, this thought goes through her mind. God kept me here. God kept me here. It could have been me, and I sometimes picture my name being up there. But she lives on with these other survivors, family members and friends who live to remember those who perished that awful day 50 years ago.